Paul writes, and he talks about uh, the full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, and then he describes Christ this way. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, he says, Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, we asked how many uh, treasures of wisdom and knowledge then are outside of Christ. Well, the answer would be, by implication, none. Okay, Paul says all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. And he goes on to say, verse 4, I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. Now, we could have a discussion as to what specifically he may have been talking about, what specific philosophy or um, thought or uh, religion is what we would call it nowadays, he may have been referring to. Um, but you can take this principle that Paul gives us and apply it to many other realms of thought and whatnot. In fact, when we move over to Colossians 2, verse 8, Paul writes and says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy. And we say some people just want to stop there. Oh, don't think. Don't do any philosophy. Don't do any thinking on your own. It just takes faith. And I always want to ask those people, then why do you believe in God rather than the invisible pink unicorn? Because, you know, and they say, well, that's just silly, Chris. There are no invisible pink unicorns. I say, but it just takes faith. You just have to believe. You know, the song, I believe I can fly. No, that doesn't mean that you can't, okay? <laughs> um, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty the seat, which are according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. So Paul qualifies what he's talking about. He's talking about the philosophy, or a philosophy. Philosophy which is in accordance with the first principles, the elementary spirits of the world, okay, according to human tradition, and not according to Christ. And so text implies that there is a philosophy that's according to Christ. God has created us and endowed us with reason. He's done so so that we might use it. Um, we moved on and looked at also, and now I think I've lost my place in my head, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and Paul says Paul wrote, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Paul asks this in verse 20, Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. Skip down to verse 25. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. There are lots and lots of discussions like this throughout Scripture. And um, we talked about how Scripture, even though... There are lots and lots of different things that we might call worldviews. Okay, we said you know, there's an agnostic worldview, there's the atheist worldview, Buddhist worldview, Hindu worldview. Okay, all these different worldviews, right? I don't know, name another one. Zoroastrian worldview. First, Muslim worldview, yeah. So first of all, what is a worldview? Well, we keep saying this over and over again, a worldview is basically the way in which someone views the world. Okay. It is a network of presuppositions by which we interpret our experience. Um, what is a presupposition? Well, it's something that we would assume or something we would take for granted, something that we would, um, I don't mean take for granted as in we haven't thought about it, okay? but take for granted as in it's what we're thinking about above and beyond everything else. It's our supreme authority. We are uh, devoted to that thing. Okay, that would be a presupposition. It's a starting point for all of our thinking, for all of the interpretation of our experience. Now, 
There are different worldviews in the sense that I just said now. Lots of different worldviews, okay? But I said, what is it that all of these have in common with each other? And the answer is that they're not Christianity. And when you look at Scripture, when you look at, say, Christ, as I keep repeating, saying, you're either for me or against me. And when you look at Proverbs 1.7, which says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and it's fools who despise destruction. All through Proverbs, you see that um, differentiation between the wise person, who starts with the fear of the Lord, and lives in accordance with the precepts of God's word, Okay. And you see that person set in sharp distinction with the fool um, all through Proverbs. That's biblical language. We're not talking about, you fool, like Mr. T might say or something. I pity the fool. It's not a name-calling thing. It's someone who um, has become futile in his or her reasoning. Paul continues to back this up. Uh, for example, in Romans, he talks about this. Um, in Romans chapter 1, which we will get to, Lord willing, in the weeks to follow, because it's a very important text for what we are looking at. But anyway, I said we can think of these as different manifestations of the non-Christian worldview, and that according to Scripture, there are ultimately two worldviews, okay? Christianity and non-Christianity. There's nothing in between, okay? There's no neutral ground. And again, all of these have in common that they're non-Christian. Buddhism, agnosticism, atheism, all of them are non-Christian. And what I said was that we will take the whole of Christianity as a worldview and set it over against the whole of non-Christianity. Now we haven't talked about this a whole lot yet, but what we're going to look at is that this starts with the Christ of Scriptures. God, as He has revealed Himself to us, in his word. That is a Christian's ultimate commitment. Okay? Or at least it should be. Right? Because God's word is authoritative. There is no higher authority than God in a Christian world. Okay? Non-Christianity, I said, starts with so look. Say Christ. That's what we start with. Non-Christianity starts with self. Now I know, a Muslim's not going to say that he or she starts with self. He or she is going to say, I start with Allah. I start with the Quran, the book that was written in heaven, delivered to us, okay? But the Quran is not a true revelation of a true being. And later on, we can look at specifically uh, arguments which show such to be the case. If it helps, then set those aside right now, okay? There are religions that claim that they start with some other authority than self. If you have to think of this in terms more of atheism or agnosticism, in order to help you understand it, then do so for right now, okay? Um, I think I remember phrasing it this way. Islam does not start with the Christ of Scripture. Judaism, modern day Judaism, does not start with the Christ of Scripture. And so they are opposed to Christ. They are they do start with self.